Hello everyone and welcome to another video where I am slowly morphing into Rapunzel because my hair, much like this lockdown, just never seems to end. Some of you may be experiencing a weird sense of <laughs> of deja vu seeing the title and thumbnail of this video and the reason for that is it's because I've made it before. I've I literally made this exact video over a year ago and well let's just say it didn't go down so well. Usually when I make videos where I try new things I, I do a lot of research on the topic and I talk extensively about the history and the community or whatever it may be because you know I like to provide you know a serving of knowledge alongside a a plate of entertainment. However, <laughs> in this particular circumstance, um, I just didn't do that. Maybe it's because I filmed it in 42 degrees Celsius and, you know, the heat just fried my brain. <laughs> but I just did no research for this video. Not even like a, not even a, a tiny Google. <laughs> just absolutely nothing. I just popped the corset on and off we went. And so quite rightly, um, quite a lot of people in the comments of that video they weren't chuffed <laughs> there was a lot of disappointment <laughs> in that comment section felt like I was back at school and so I felt quite bad about it um, because it, it's very unusual that I make a video purely for entertainment purposes and when I do it's usually me just running round on Heelys <laughs> for a day. But in this case, I, I managed to offend an entire community of corset wearers, which, you know, that's gotta be a record for me <laughs> in terms of most people disappointed in a day. It's usually just limited to my mum and dad, but there we are. So I decided that I would do this video again, but properly this time. <laughs> but before we do that, I just wanna take a, a little detour. Welcome back to everyone's unofficial favorite corner of the internet, the integration corner. I am expecting you all to exercise your democratic right to vote for this as your favourite unofficial corner of the internet by using the like button down below. Today we welcome back a long-term friend of the integration corner, Skillshare. As many of you already know, because I'm obsessed with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. There are thousands of classes to tintillate your senses. In fact, I've, I've heard rumors there are so many classes. You develop a new sense because of how stimulated you are. I have found that during the last few months, time doesn't really seem to exist anymore and I'm in a weird kind of limbo. So I found that setting creative challenges has really been a way to not only motivate me in my day-to-day -day life, but also give some meaning to <laughs> the never-ending days that are just the exact same thing. Skillshare has saved me from the monotony of life. That should be the new slogan, to be honest. Many of you may know that I, unfortunately, am a serial plant murderer. There used to be three plants in this office. Do you see any plants now? <laughs> it's an ongoing joke on my Twitch that whenever I introduce chat to a new plant, um, they just they just say goodbye to it there and then. Because when a plant enters into my household, uh, <laughs> it's like a human being invited for dinner at Hannibal Lecter's. It's, you just know it's not gonna go well. And so I've been taking the Plants at Home Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space class by Christopher Griffin. This class has been teaching me a lot, not only in how to listen to my plants and, you know, look after them, <laughs> but also about how you can use plants to uplift your energy and, you know, the space that you live in. The power of plants to make us feel better is a legitimate hypothesis. It's called the biophilia hypothesis and it's an idea that humans are innately connected to nature and being around more nature can actually make us happier. And the best part is <laughs> everyone who's seen me do a Skillshare integration before you know, just say it with me. Because Skillshare is specifically curated for learning, there are no ads on the site, which means you don't get annoying interruptions like that. <laughs> and you know, me being me, person of the people, I've negotiated a banging deal 
for you lot. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will receive a free trial <laughs> of a Skillshare premium membership. And after that, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So click the link in the description below, you know, whack it if you have to, gently caress it. I, I don't care how you go about it. You can learn a new skill, enhance your creativity and support my channel, which is really quite lovely of you. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I started this by going through the most liked comments on the video. I was very, very fortunate that even though I probably deserved a lot of name calling, <laughs> pretty much all of the comments were very, very helpfully constructive. There was a lot of advice, information, access to resources. Thank you very much for that because it made this video so much easier to make because I actually had an idea of where to start this time. <laughs> so I made a list of the most commonly noted issues with my video and I figured that we'd just go through them and just chastise me for <laughs> for being an idiot. So the first major problem was that the way I laced my corset was something called tight lacing. Now tight lacing is very popular amongst a waist training community, but it's not at all representative of what a typical corset wearer does. Tight lacing is where you essentially make your corset go as tight as humanly possible, um, <laughs> at risk of, you know, crushing your internal organs, but Content. Now, even amongst the waist training community, tight lacing takes years to build up to. It's not something that you can just do as a beginner. And it was actually really stupid of me to do it because it can be quite dangerous. You should not, absolutely not, as a beginner, just pop on a corset and tight lace it, especially in 42 degrees Celsius. Stupid. The second issue was that my corset was actually quite ill-fitting. Now, the corset that I got was a full-length corset that went over my hips, as well as being over my bosom. Bosom? What is this, the 18th century? <laughs> really getting into the history with this one. Now, not only is a full-length corset a bit too intense for a beginner, my, my corset actually went too far down beyond my hips, which made it even more uncomfortable when I put it on and did it up. This was what created my <laughs> very severe movement issues. <laughs> if you've seen the video, you'll know I just waddled like a penguin the entire day. <laughs> now the third most common criticism was the fact that I didn't wear anything underneath my corset. I just had my corset on my bare skin. Now in my defense, <laughs> right, the, the website that I bought it on, the models didn't wear anything underneath their corsets either. So I feel like I could be forgiven <laughs> For, for thinking that this was, you know, how things were done. Usually when you wear a corset, you have to wear a, a small vest or t-shirt underneath it. Traditionally, a chemise, I think that's how you say it. It's kind of like a slip satin nighty kind of thing was worn. Now, not only does this protect your skin from the corset because corsets can leave some <laughs> pretty gnarly marks as we saw in my last video. It also protects the corset from you. Corsets are really difficult to wash if they can be washed at all. And you really don't want to be getting sweat and dead skin on your corset because it's gonna be a bit minging. So whilst these errors did result in a video that was <laughs> quite entertaining as I was waddling around like a fainting penguin all day, they didn't really provide an accurate reflection of what it's like to wear a corset and um, it was not very smart. Looking back at it, I probably should have realized that I'd done something wrong when I couldn't eat falafel without it taking up the small amount of space I had in the corset for oxygen. Firstly, I wanna talk about where corsets come from. Corsets were worn by women and sometimes even men in the Western world between the 16th century and the early 20th century. But corset-like garments can be traced all the way back to 1600 BC. So, they're very old. <laughs> they were originally designed as close-fitting sleeveless bodices, but throughout time, they gradually became considered an undergarment. Traditionally, the boning in corsets were made out of whale bone, but as time moved on, <laughs> they kind of realized that was, that was probably not good, uh, <laughs> and it became steel in later corsets. The aim of a corset was to compress the natural waist, give the wearer good posture, and an appealing hourglass silhouette. There are a lot of different corset shapes throughout history, ranging from longer corsets that go over your hips, like the one I wore in my first video, and shorter corsets, like the one I'm gonna use in this video, that exclusively focus on the waist. Corsets are not generally considered as underwear anymore. In fact, many mainstream and design 
designer brands use corset and corset-like shapes and silhouettes in their clothing, especially with the invention of elastic in the 1920s, which allowed corsets to be a lot more flexible than they'd been prior. <laughs> Now, in my last video, I talked about how uncomfortable it was and I could understand why, you know, <laughs> women back in the day were always fainting. And there is actually a lot of discussion amongst fashion historians about to what extent corsets were detrimental to the wearer's health. I do just want to give a quick little trigger warning here um, as we're going to be talking about difficulties with childbirth. So if you are sensitive to that, please do skip ahead about 20 seconds and I'll see you in a minute. Some fashion historians argue that routinely wearing tight corsets put the wearer at risk of miscarriage, birth defects, rib deformities, decreased lung capacity and even severe respiratory diseases. But on the other hand, some argue that it caused decreased lung capacity and fainting, but nothing more sinister than that. This may come as a surprise to you, but I am neither a fashion historian nor a doctor, um, <laughs> so I can't really give much of an opinion on this. But if we're talking specifically about tight lacing, which is essentially what I did when I wore that full length corset, I could definitely understand how it could cause these more severe health issues. I mean, I felt like my internal organs were being reduced to mush. <laughs> but as tight lacing isn't considered standard practice for most corset wearers, I am less inclined to believe that these super, super severe health defects are, are applicable. <laughs> that I decided to get this time was a smaller corset and I did this because there is less room for error in terms of sizing. Mine does have hip gores because I have quite wide hips and I was concerned that if I got a smaller one it would dig in. As soon as I opened it I realized straight away that it was gonna be far better suited to me than the first corset that I wore and so you know thought I'd give it a go. So I've just had a shower I'm gonna try on the corset now for the first time. I've put on like a really loose baggy white shirt. Initially when I was looking at what people said you should wear underneath the corset they said satin and I do have a satin vest but it's it's a little bit chilly outside and I don't really want to be wearing a, a vest really. So I have the corset here it has just arrived I'm gonna try it on for the first time. I've just got to hope that it, it fits and that it's somewhat easy to do up on my own because <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be a little bit of an issue with that. Ooh, these are very long. I might have to undo my trousers for this, to be honest. All my neighbours are probably thinking I'm doing a very bad strip tease right now. Which is a fair assessment, to be honest. It sits just where the bottom of your bra would, and it's made out of a cotton twill, which means that it's exceptionally comfortable and flexible. The corset that I had in the previous video was made out of a satiny material, which made it incredibly hard <laughs> to move in, and it also wasn't very breathable. The corset doesn't seem to have any steel boning throughout of it. Um, it just has the steel fasteners at the front which obviously give the corset shape. <laughs> well this is going well. I'm just gonna pull it and hope for the best. Oh no that's not I've not done that right. I need like a dressing made, is that what they're called? Do I need to pull at the bottom? Is that where I'm is that where I'm messing up? I'm so confused at where I'm going wrong but I know I'm going wrong somewhere. Is it too high? No it doesn't feel like it's too high. I mean Boobs are looking great. <laughs> okay, well this is feeling like a, 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 a tight hug, which from what I've learned from my research is exactly how it's supposed to feel. I also feel like wearing a white shirt with wet hair was something that I really did not think through. Monetization. <laughs> Where is she? So this here is like as tight as is comfortable. I don't feel like I can't breathe, see? <sighs> yeah, I know there was a lot of wheeze in that, but I'm asthmatic, so just... <laughs> Forget you heard it. Where are you supposed to put the ribbon? Sneak it in under. That sounds like a plan. Okay, there's not a lot of room in there for a ribbon. <laughs> I just feel like the jeans are ruining the vibes. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is already a bajillion times more comfortable than the first corset I wore. It only focuses on the waist, um, and it's a lot more flexible considering it only houses, you know, your vital organs. I mean, I know I've not got a lot going for me in the boob department, but this corset is... <laughs> It's doing me some real favours. <laughs> I am living my Kira Knightley in Pirates of Caribbean dream. However, I have just realised that I've not put my shoes on. Um, and this is... This is the, the range of movement that I have. Maybe that air push. Did 
not think that one through. I won't lie, I was quite impressed with how cute the outfit turned out. I was really living my, my pirate fantasies. <laughs> Something that is really interesting to note is that a corset won't necessarily make you slimmer from the side. For example, when I wore this corset, I actually looked wider from the side. And this is because whilst a corset does compress your natural waist to give you a, a very hourglass figure from the front, it doesn't necessarily do anything to bring you inwards. So from the side, because this is quite a thick piece of fabric that you're adding to your waist, you may actually look slightly wider. Last time I filmed this video, I set myself a series of goals to complete throughout the day. And I wanted to do that again, but um, given that I'm in yet another national lockdown, um, not that easy. So I tried to set a few challenges that were very, very close to the ones in the first video, but obviously with some adjustments. These challenges were, can I eat in the corset? Can I move and work in the corset? And perhaps most importantly, can I put my shoes on? in the corset. Now, if you've seen the last video, you'll know just about how well each of those went, <laughs> but I'm hoping for greater success this time. Okay, so I have uh, YDYB samples that I need to go and pick up. If you don't know, YDYB is my ethical and sustainable clothing brand. We do limited edition seasonal drops, so they're kind of like a one-off design that you can get and then you can't once it's sold out. Uh, there is a link in the description. As you can see, I am sat down on the stairs. So there is a level of movability in this corset that the other one didn't have. I am sat down very comfortably. I'm not struggling for breath or anything. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't dig in. I'm gonna do the shoe test though. As we all know, this is the make or break. <laughs> that was surprisingly easy. <laughs> if you just sit down and do your shoes on top of your knee, it's not very hard. I'm really <laughs> not struggling. <laughs> Compared to last time, this is a significant improvement. White boots or black boots? Let me know which one you prefer in the comments down below. Um, not that it will change anything, because, you know, you're commenting it in the future. This has already happened. But I just want to know whether I made the right decision or not, so please let me know. And if you all say different to what I've chosen, um, guess I'll just go cry. God, these shoes are difficult to get on, you know. What's ironic is what's causing me a struggle getting these shoes on is not the corset, but the boots themselves. Shoes are on. I'm in a corset. It's already better than the last time. Right, I am going to get my coat on and then we're going to go on a drive. I'm not going to bring my camera just because I don't like bringing my camera in the car, but I will bring my phone and hopefully I can film some stuff on that. I've just realised I've not put any makeup on, so if I look exhausted, it's because I am. <laughs> Driving in a corset was an incredibly bizarre experience, um, mainly because I never thought that I'd drive with such good posture in my life. <laughs> I slouch a lot whilst driving, and so the corset was uncomfortable, not because it in of itself was uncomfortable, but because I was trying to resist the perfect erectness that, <laughs> that it was trying to, trying to give me. It wasn't the most comfortable ride. Okay, so I just got back from collecting my samples, and I put a croissant in the oven, and I've made some coffee. Please ignore my cardigan, which I'm aware does not go at all, by the way. I'm just very cold in this house because I forgot to put the heating on. Unlike with the last corset I wore, there is definitely room in this corset for food. I don't think that eating this is going to take up the room in the corset that's used for oxygen currently, but nonetheless, I shall eat it and give you a little review. My review is that croissants are delicious and this corset is very comfortable. So I'm just gonna do some editing now. I have a couple of um, brand deals that I need to edit and send off for approval. And then I'm gonna stream on Twitch. I'll give you guys an update before I stream. So after I finish my editing in probably an hour or so, and then I'll insert a little review on stream <laughs> because by that point I'll have been wearing the corset for 10 hours, I think. And so we'll see if I've changed my mind about the current comfort level by that point. I was really pleasantly surprised with how comfortable the corset was to work in. Because of the flexibility of the fabric, I do feel like it gives you more leeway to either, you know, slouch a little bit or to have room to eat and, you know, breathe. But what was really interesting is that I spent hours and hours sat at my desk every day and recently this has kind of accumulated to me having quite bad shoulder and neck pain. But on the day that I wore my corset, because it was forcing me to have much better posture, I didn't have the same intensity of pain in my shoulders and neck that I usually do. And I won't lie, that was something that was really lovely because I didn't have, you know, this, this pain that I've had for weeks. Shout out to the corset for... <laughs> 
fixing my poor sitting habits. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished streaming. Uh, I'm quite tired and I won't lie. At this point, my corset kind of, it hurts quite a bit, but not because it's too tight or anything. I just think my posture is, has not been very good while streaming and because I'm slouching a lot, it's kind of digging into me. I won't lie, I'm ready to get it off. I feel like I've reached my limit with this now. To its credit, I do feel like I have massively improved my posture today. I feel like I've been walking taller, which has made me actually feel more confident. I also like how it feels, I feel supported in it. I do feel like I, I did the corset justice this time. I know it sounds ridiculous, but doing even the most basic research into what corset a beginner should get, the materials, how you should lace it and how tight you should lace it, it makes a it makes an insane amount of difference. I mean, who'd have thought it? You know, research good. I fully intend to keep this corset and I imagine I'm going to be wearing it quite regularly. Not only because I love the look that the corset gives, I think it's actually a very fashionable item when you want to channel your, your inner Penelope Cruz, but also because this corset provides you with, with quite a lot of support and, you know, given that we're in our third national lockdown, I'll take all the support I can get. As always, please let me know down below, would you wear a corset? Have you worn a corset? Do you still wear a corset? I love hearing your guys' opinions, especially when they are very constructive and helpful and they help me learn more about corsetry or cosplay or I don't know, whatever weird and wonderful thing we're discovering this week <laughs> on the Elbert YouTube channel. I find your insights invaluable. So if you could just let me know down below what you think, it'd be wonderful. I will link this specific corset in the description down below. And I will also link videos from creators that help me to learn more about corsetry and you know, how to do it safely. Recently, my upload schedules have been a bit of a mess because of university exams. So YouTube is not the biggest fan of me right now. So if we could get this video to 10,000 likes, and 5,000 comments, I will shed a tear of happiness. Um, I just want to get in the YouTube algorithms good books again, so please help me. <laughs> please. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your week, remember to hydrate, and as always, give my kisses to your mother. Bye!